Basically, the six sources of gossip that destroy churches. Number one, slander. Number two, desire for position. Number three, jealousy. Number four, nonspecific carnality. Number five, biblical illiteracy. And number six, lost people in the church. I once heard someone say, if you leave a roller coaster all on its own, all to itself, eventually it'll end up at the bottom. And that's pretty true. Today I want to look at uh, some of the sources of one of the things that can be most destructive uh, in your local church. And I think this will be helpful uh, and you'll be able to see uh, today we're going to look at four sources of gossip that will destroy your church. And I know you may have already guessed gossip was the, the issue, but we're going to look at that today real quickly in our church leader travel talk. So let's look at these six sources. Uh, first, the first one that we see is slander. Uh, and slander is used throughout Scripture over 50 times, actually. Scripture, uh, the words are translated for gossip or slander. So Scripture does have a lot to say about it, and it's pretty important for us to understand that uh, Scripture is not very supportive of us slandering uh, at all. So uh, slander is very, very important. Uh, and it's always noted as being something negative. It's never anything positive in Scripture. So the first source of gossip that destroys churches is slander. Slandering individuals, slandering persons. Uh, it's just, it's bad behavior, period. All right, we're not going to go into a lot of detail. I, I will tell you this. Number two is desire for position. And before I unpack that a little bit, uh, let me tell you, this is from uh, a two-sermon series, basically, that a friend of mine, Phil Spry in North Carolina, gave me uh, years and years ago and said, Bobby, this is one of the big problems in the church. I preach a message or two on gossip every year in my church. And so uh, I, I thought that's a good idea because it is a real source of problem. So. There are lots of scriptures, dozens and dozens of scriptures that we're going to use uh, in these six sources and then the part two and part three uh, on the results and the remedies. But I'm going to put uh, the full message with all the resources, all the scriptures, all the references, uh, and we'll just put that on our Dynamic Church Patreon page. So you can go to patreon.com slash dynamic church and find those and just download those and use those, pass them around, give them to whoever. Uh, we want you to do that. All right, number two, uh, the second source of gossip that destroys a church is desire for position. Desire for position. I've seen this happen over and over and over in churches, and sometimes uh, it's a uh, very under the table, uh, very quiet, somebody who approaches it kind of uh, silently, but deep down inside, it's obvious that they, they are somebody who wants to have a certain kind of position. Uh, we see this in scripture. There's a number of uh, illustrations we could use, but just think of David for a moment. King David was uh, being chased after and said, they're, they're you know, trying to get me. They're trying to hurt me, it says in, in Scripture. Uh, same thing happens in churches, and anytime you have people who are more desirous of position than they are of working together and unifying the body and serving together, uh, it leads to a divided church. Uh, and there's just no way to get around that. So divided church. So number one is slander. Number two is desire for position. Number three is jealousy. Uh, a study was done some time back about the things that people are most jealous about and create the greatest division in churches. And the number one thing that came up was the issue of control. Number two was personality. Uh, and I've seen both of those things just rip churches all to pieces. Uh, you know, the, there's a, a potentially a lay leader, an individual in the church, and he has kind of a different vision, or she, it could be a she, he or she has a different kind of a vision than what maybe the pastor has. And they kind of go head to head, and they don't see eye to eye. And you have these two visions, and one is wanting power, and the other one is trying to hold on to power, and there ends up being this uh, jealous battle between the two. And so it's, it's something that a uh, control uh, just tears churches all to pieces. And so we have to really strive to do what, uh, you know, John wrote about John 17. He talked about uh, Jesus, his, his prayer for the church, that they be unified. And that uh, we, we know 
or the world knows us because of our love for one another. Uh, those are all things that give evidence of that and not a jealous control as we often see. All right, number four, nonspecific carnality. Nonspecific carnality is the fourth source of gossip in churches. Now, this can be described in lots of different ways, uh, but let me give you kind of a short story. When our family first moved to Atlanta uh, here several years back now, uh, and Brenda and I were moving, the boys both had apartments in Michigan and were continuing their, their lives there, but we had an apartment and it was on kind of the south side of Atlanta and uh, we were all you know excited about having this, this house and we got into the house and long story short the house was infested with roaches and I don't mean those teeny tiny ones uh, call Brenda up sometime they were roaches like this or maybe like this <laughs> They were huge, and uh, the house was full of them. In fact, you can look into the backyard, and there there were a couple of trees not too far from the back uh, porch window, and you could look out there, and it looked like the tree trunk was moving because there were so many roaches on the tree, it was just wiggling, you know? I mean, really freaky. Well, long story short, we didn't stay there for a long time. We had to get out of there. Uh, but, you know, the concern in, in churches is that gossip is kind of like roaches and you're not so much worried uh, about you know the roach and what it's going to eat and all that i mean maybe you are but that's not the biggest concern the biggest concern is really what those roaches drop into what they get into and what they destroy what they ruin anything they get into has to be thrown out it's destroyed right so in churches when you have carnality uh, these are individuals that that are following the the ways of the flesh rather than the ways of the spirit rather than the ways of god and they get in the middle of things, and it's that non-specific carnality. It's that carnality that uh, just destroys the the mix of unity, destroys the the things that can happen in a church, and it just it it squelches the spirit of God. There's just no question about it. All right, lots more. Uh, again, the full notes and all the scripture references on the patreoncom slash dynamic church or dynamic church not church ministry just dynamic church um, okay number six number six is biblical illiteracy biblical illiteracy people do not realize how much scripture says about what we say how we talk they they don't they don't understand and they don't read the scripture enough they don't memorize the scripture they don't have a grasp on it in fact take some time if you've never done this look at the book of proverbs 31 chapters in proverbs read one chapter a day and let me encourage you to do this when you're reading uh, each day when you read it take a, a marker or a pen depends on what you want to use in your bible uh, and mark or underline every time there's anything to do with walking or talking Okay, so if it talks about path, a light unto my path, you underline the word path. If it talks about walking somewhere, it talks about doing something like that and uses language about a path, a road, whatever it is, or what you say. And you're going to be surprised as there are dozens and dozens and dozens of references there and people just don't understand. They would fall under much more conviction if they really understood all that the scripture says uh, about what we say. There has to be uh, an integrity of life. In fact, we talked about this just today in, in the morning worship service. The importance of the integrity of life that lines up with not only what we say, but we practice exactly what we're talking about and we say. So gossips tend to be those who oftentimes are not literate in scripture and they don't realize the severe damage that they're going to do to a church. All right, the last one. Number six, lost people in the church. Lost people in the church. I know Billy Graham used to say that uh, he estimated that there were at least 50% or more of the people that were members of churches that weren't actually saved. Others I've seen in years since that have said it's even more than that. They've even talked about it being more than that. So if you, you take those numbers and then you take some of those who are carnal Christians that are in the church, now you've got a mix of people and you can't expect 
that church to be able to operate and move forward in a scriptural and a biblical way, a unified way, uh, uh, following the Spirit of God and, and focused on Christ as the, the head of the church. Uh, they don't act like a, a good bride. They act like a very angry bride uh, is what happens. And people that I have known over the years that without question, in my impression, was they were so spiritual. They were, uh, you know, godly people. But in the midst of some kind of a conflict, you might say the gloves came off, but I have heard innumerable things where they've just really lost tempers and thrown fisticuffs. I've pulled people apart in churches uh, before when, you know, have a business meeting, they get all upset. Well, I'm, I'm concerned. Either they're carnal or they're lost uh, because that's not the way Christians should behave. That's not the way believers should behave. Now, I'm not discounting uh, issues of mental illness and other kinds of things that sometimes people struggle with. Even a Christian can have depression. Even a Christian can have uh, issues of mental illness, and sometimes those skew us. But if that's the case, we need to lovingly love our brother and sister in the Lord and uh, be able to help them. Uh, try to help them get the help that they need as well. All right, we're going to wrap it up. Let me review real quickly the six sources of gossip that destroy churches. Number one, slander. Number two, desire for position. Number three, jealousy. Number four, nonspecific carnality. Number five, biblical illiteracy. And number six, lost people in the church. Now, the next video is going to be on the results that happen because of gossip. And then the final video will be on the remedy that we can look at uh, for solving gossip in the local church. So I hope you'll join me for those as we continue with another church leader, Road Talk. All right, bye-bye.